This is Twit. Our listeners will recall that last week's podcast, as I mentioned at the top, was URL ping tracking, where I described the HTML5 feature of the ping term, which can be added into an, the A, you know, A space href equals anchor tag in, in order to cause the browser to asynchronously uh, send a ping post to anywhere. And I, and I commented at the time that, oh, and, and Leo, you did miss some fun stuff because I, I looked at the source of a Google search page from Chrome, you know, right click and then mm-hmm. on, on and view source. And the URLs were clean because in every one of the URLs was a ping reference because in order for Google to track which link I clicked. And, and I, and I acknowledge that there are, you know, there are reasons why Google would need to know what we clicked on uh, other than for just tracking us and profiling us and building up a profile of us for their advertising business. And that is, uh, it helps their search results. If they know, if they present a bunch of, of URLs and they see what people tend to choose from a page that, that a human has never looked at before, now a human is looking at it. So so, th- so th- th- there's, there's some value there. If you bring up the same page under, for example, Firefox, what the what you see is that the URLs do not point to where the link is taking you, but they all, of course, point back to Google, and in the URL tail is the actual destination. So when when you click on the link, you go back to Google, Google registers that, sees where you're actually wanting to go, and then redirects your browser there. So the point is, you know, the Without this ping tracking, we're using URL redirection in order to achieve the same thing. Um, and, and I got some feedback from my listeners who were from who were disappointed last week in my my kind of resignation to the fact of tracking. It's like I, I said, you know, well, the the browsers are going to end up giving up on this. We are going to have de facto ping tracking because it's now in the HTML5 spec. Chrome is removing it from even the ability to disable it. Uh, I had I did learn that um, uBlock Origin automatically blocks it. So there's another little benefit of using uBlock Origin. I mean, it comes for free. It just blocks the ping tracking. Um, anyway, so back to my failure of imagination. Uh, it, it turns out that uh, the sole purpose of the ping term is not only tracking. Uh, it has been used as an effective DDoS attack. Um, it turns out that um, it allows JavaScript to edit the ping term and to then programmatically click the URL to launch these ping queries at any other website. One of the things that I noted last week is that there is no same origin protection for this ping. That is, it can you can ping anywhere, not just the origin from which the page came. And I talked about how, you know, I first blushed, that was like, wait a minute, you know, uh, is that good? Except that I'm sure that the, the people who are working on the spec noted that, well, the URL could go anywhere. So URL redirection has no same origin restrictions. So why should ping tracking? Well, one of the consequences of no same origin enforcement for the ping is that if it, that, that and it's already been done in the wild, that these pings can be aimed at a, at a site that you wish to attack and JavaScript is able to trigger the URLs, which then triggers an off-site ping. Um, what happened was that uh, Imperva Research uncovered a DDoS attack utilizing these HTML pings 
to perform a distributed denial of service attack on various gaming websites. In one attack which they monitored, which peaked at 7,500 requests per second, a total of 70 million requests were generated from approximately 4,000 IP addresses over the course of four hours, which substantially loaded, you know, basically buried the, the targeted server under relatively expensive requests. I mean, they are, they're, they're short queries, but in terms of, in terms of an HTML request, that's more than, you know, 7,500 per second is more than, than most, um, uh, sites are equipped to handle. Um, as we know, Safari and Opera, we would cover this last week, no, offer no provision for disabling this behavior. Uh, it's enabled by default in Chrome, and Google has is planning to the the the. I think it's we're on 73 now with Chrome. 74 and 75 have removed the option to disable it. It is still disabled by default under Firefox and Brave. Firefox offers you the option to enable it. Brave doesn't even offer you the option to enable it. So good on them. Um, but it does look like um, as a consequence of this kind of abuse that our browser designers are going to need to come up with some way to preserve this functionality, which – they've pretty much all capitulated to. I, I, I also mentioned last week that th this ping term, it was familiar to me when I saw that, when I saw that, that Chrome was removing it, which is what put it back on our radar for last week. Um, it's been around for a decade, but it's sort of like no one was in a hurry to do it because it was just pure and simple tracking. I mean, that's what it was for, was for, mo for link auditing is where it's euphemistically described in some places. So I think what they're going to need to do is to come up with some way to prevent its abuse. Um, uh, uh, maybe prevent script from modifying it in the DOM. Um, I, I, I don't know what they'll do. Or maybe reconsider not uh, putting a same origin policy limit on it as so many other things in our browsers currently have uh, and that same we often talk about the same origin limitation being hugely responsible for security if if you could only ping back to the site which had issued the page then then you could make it that site's responsibility to ping other people if it chose to do so the and and just for the record leo because this is i mean the the coolness of this is that and I'm sure it's part of the reason that Google likes it is that it it is a it's an asynchronous query. That is, if you use the if you use the old style URL redirection approach, then you when you click on a link, you go back to the site that issued the page and then first, and then it redirects you to your target. If you use the ping approach, the browser does both at once. It the, the URL you're clicking on is your target. So you go directly to that page while in the background, um, the, the browser launches a separate thread which – Ping, which follows the the ping reference in the URL yeah, you, to notify the site. You wouldn't want it to hang things up while it did all that. That would right, be, yeah, right, right. And so, so, it, but so, it, if you were to impose a a um, a same origin policy, then you could still get the speed increase of a synchronous operation. Then the that but the site that that was pinged back to could, if it chose, issue ping its own pings to other third parties rather than having it done by the user's browser. So it's actually a little cleaner too. It'd be nice to see that maybe uh, people will say, oh, whoops, uh, we need to, you know, just impose a same origin policy. I mean, it probably takes half a line of code to do that because all of the logic is already in our browsers for taking care of this.